If they haven't already arrived, they are flocking here in droves, <laughs> and we're talking about snowbirds. These are people who live here in the winter and everywhere else in the <laughs> summer, and most of them are retired, and when it tax time rolls around, they have to choose between Arizona and their other home state as their legal resident. Our legal affairs contributor, Craig Wisdom, joins us now with what snowbirds need to know when it comes to estate protection. Thanks for being here. Thank you very much. So why, why, why do you need protection? I mean, you got one primary residence and a secondary residence. Don't they just work together? They pretty much do. You just need to be aware of certain issues uh, that arise. And one thing that comes up is people say, well, you know, I did my documents back in Minnesota where I'm from. Do I need to change them when I come out here? And for some of the documents, like their main ones, like their will and their trust, the answer is no. If they were valid there, they're valid in Arizona and they should take care of you. But certain documents, like powers of attorney, really should be done in Arizona as well. Those are designed to be used in the case of an emergency when you can't do things yourself. And the last things you want is to be arguing with a doctor or hospital or bank here about why your Minnesota power of attorney should be recognized. Mm -hmm. And in terms of like uh, taxes and stuff, I, I, you had said to me that it's important to check out the laws in the state where you're planning on uh, wintering or whatever because they may be different from where you are from. Right. There's some issues that normally come up if you own property in another state. Mm -hmm. If you own real estate, Arizona doesn't have its own estate tax. So if people move out here and they own property here, they don't have to worry about it. But sometimes with other states, they might say, hey, if you own some real estate there, we're going to take a little bit of your estate tax when the time comes. And also to be aware of you have to go, th if you own real estate in another state like Arizona, you may end up going through probate in both states when someone dies. So that may make a revocable trust more attractive, or they may want to look into what Arizona allows for, which is a beneficiary deed, if they don't want to have to do a court proceeding here after someone dies. We, we hear of people who have dual citizenships different mm -hmm. countries. You can't do that in different states. No, normally in, in the United States you're a resident of one state or another and that's normally important for things like which state you, you pay your most of your income taxes in and each state actually probably has their own rules but you know for instance mostly if people live more in one state than another that's going to be their place of residence. If there's a big income tax difference between two states, they might want to figure out which, which state they should cheaper. try to make their, <laughs> their primary residence. Do you suggest that uh, these people who have this dual residency have an attorney in each state? Well, they, they probably don't need an attorney to do an awful lot for them here if they're mm -hmm. just winter visitors, but it certainly never hurts to have someone maybe to do their power of attorneys and whom they can contact just in case something comes up and something unforeseen happens. Mm -hmm. Do you ever run into banking issues as well? Well, for the most part, no. I mean, if people set up their banking accounts here, they're going to need to access them. Again, if they need to use powers of attorney, they should have Arizona ones because that's who they're going to be dealing with. Okay. Craig, Excellent. good stuff. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Well, many